you know, if you think about how payments used to be for e-commerce merchants before, it was a much more complex process you know, before Stripe really arrived. Today, any developer that opens up a website and starts to sell, whether they're selling digital or hard goods, payments is merely an API call. So they can actually embed payments directly into their website as a So let me unpack experience. that a little bit. So it used to be when someone would start a website, you'd start a, a drugstore.com, great big company. You'd have to build an infrastructure to figure out how am I going to recognize the numbers that are going to come in? How am I going to get payment, or how am I going to verify those numbers? How am I going to suck the payment out of that account? How can I tell the consumer that the payment's been accepted? That's right. And then and wait for yourself. weeks of approvals uh, to get in business. Today, you, you create your website, and within minutes, you're ready to accept payments, because Stripe does all that for you. They essentially abstract away that entire stack that you just talked about and make it a core utility that anybody can use. The interwebs, which is a series of tubes, is, is at least 15 years old where you've had e-commerce websites, maybe 20. Let's call it 20. Yeah. Amazon is probably about 20 years old now. Um, is it really that the entire time that they, there hasn't been an API for that? Absolutely not. I mean, it's, it's, it's a completely... In, in today's world, it looks like a very broken stack. You know, Visa and MasterCard, I mean, they serve a function. When you think about what uh, the interchange so does... I'm going to unpack that first, too. An unbroken stack. A broken stack, which is to say lots of crummy technologies that don't fit well together stacked on top of each other. Uh, absolutely. So, so when you think about what they're serving, they're, they're handling risk. They're handling fraud. And today, with everybody online and on social media, you know so much more about them through these other channels that you have to rethink the payment stack from the ground up. Like, how do you think about fraud? How do you think about the identity of the users? And, and therefore, a new contemporary stack that emerges and automates a lot of that for you, uh, that's really what Stripe does. So in other words, uh, I'm, like, I feel like I'm paraphrasing all this yeah. conversation. Yeah. But in other words, uh, in, in an era in which people are sharing all the names of their kids on Facebook and they're tweeting out their, their, both their thoughts and location and maybe when their birthday is on a regular basis, that suddenly the old rules, rather than adapting, need to be completely thrown out. We have to have a new technology? Absolutely, because uh, when you think about the purchasing experience today, what a lot of your social media sites are doing, a lot of what e-commerce is about. In the early days, you used to go to the store, you pick what you want to buy, and then you click on a page, it takes you to a payments page that's completely disconnected from the website, and you go get that transaction done. Today, you want to be able to see a product catches your eye in the Twitter stream or catches your eye on your Facebook stream where your friend is recommending that, and you want to be able to buy right there. So and that's really what this is doing. It's sort of the idea of payment is getting embedded in the concept of the product itself anywhere on the web. So valuation-wise, I would understand, there, therefore, why, Snap, why Stripe would seem like the kind of company adjacent to a lot of money where they could get some money in as part of those transactions at a massive scale. But it's not talking just about valuations, but about oversharing. You're invested in Snapchat, yeah. a fascinating company, basically pre-revenue, mm -hmm. which has achieved... What round did you guys invest? We were in the Series B round. So, so you're pretty early. Pretty early, yeah. And this is now becoming a very a, a enormously successful service. It's also free. It's achieved an incredible valuation, not unlike Stripe and some other companies. Yeah. To what do you attribute that valuation? I think it's really hard to create a large communities of people uh, around communication. So when you, think, when you think about what Facebook did, what WhatsApp did, where there's hundreds of millions of people using that product on a monthly basis, that's a really uh, rare um, uh, occurrence. And what Snapchat's been able to do is create a new communication par paradigm. It started out as an informal messaging, they've added on stories, they've now added on Discover and all these products. And it's, it's a fundamentally new way to communicate that users want to have in part of their tool chest when you think about how they're going to communicate with their friends. But is there a, is there a real business model there? I mean, I, you know, yeah, Warren Buffett, right? You can sell you can sell, you can sell a dollar for fifty cents. It's not a business. There will be a business model there for sure. I think the way the way you have to you have to be cognizant of the fact that this is a three year old company, right? It's gone from zero to a couple hundred people. It's I'm cognizant, but the valuations don't suggest that anyone hundreds, else is right. But what, but the the growth is so stunning that that I think it's it's not hard to understand that when you do invoke business models here, the kinds of things that Evan is. Uh, experimenting with that you'll be able to scale revenue ex exceptionally fast and that's really why valuations are justified.